First, he's kept us entertained for the past three weeks. Shane Ritchie was the joker <laughs> of the I'm a Celebrity camp, playing his pranks on his uh, fellow celebrities, uh, taking on terrifying trials and finding out the juicy gossip for us mm. in his hammock of truth. Well, before we catch up with Shane and put him on our own hammock of truth, let's take a look back at his time in the castle. If I drop you some cash, can we go straight to the M25? Oh, 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 Look at the stakes. Guys, 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 guys. Is it all gone? Hope so. Are you Mr. McDonald to pull a pint? I believe I am, Mr. Moon. We've got our manager to ask for more money. All for one! All for one! All for one! All for one! Ah, Shane, congratulations and well done. You really did keep us and, and the campmates fully entertained oh, in thank there. You. Well done. And we, we ended up with, with a queen of the castle. And she was a special girl, wasn't she, Giovanna? And I think even your daughters were huge fans of hers. Oh, as soon as it was announced that Giovanna was uh, going to be taking part in the show, straight away, my wife, who's mates with Giovanna, went, well, there's your winner. There's no point in you going, Shane. Uh, and even my daughters. Oh, and she's such a great role model as well, I think, to young girls and mums and... Uh, and she had such a big heart. And she was the go-to person. If anyone was feeling down, you know, there was times I felt down in the castle, and I'd just give her a little nod. But what was really great, because there was a lot of us that were parents mm. in the castle, and between myself, Giovanna, uh, Vernon and Mo and Russell and all that, and, and Dame Derbyshire, every mm -hmm. time we got to talk about our children, we'd try and departmentalise it. And Giovanna was like, right, no one's talking about children. And sometimes you go, yeah, but I miss my children. Uh -huh. <laughs> and Giovanna was great at saying, right, no one's talking about children. So she was great. You, um, I think you were going to do, or you were asked to do the original series, what, 20 yeah, years ago? Yeah, 20. And then, uh, and then you obviously work didn't allow it, and you finally get into this one. When you found out that it was in Wales and not Australia, um, your thoughts? Um, I, I was kind of, I was out of work. I was happy to go anywhere. Uh, um, <laughs> but when, uh, when they did, <laughs> when they said about Wales, straight away, I, me, me and Christy spoke about it. I said, Christy, if I get voted out really, uh, at least I'll be home for the school run. And I kept thinking <laughs> like practical reasons about, you know, it's not far, I could get home. Uh, I mean, we were gutted when it was in Australia. I've never been to Australia. And when I was approached to do it like, uh, in January, we had it all planned. We spoke to the school, Christy and the kids were going to come out, we had all homework we were going to bring, and we were going to make it an adventure. And then they said, no one can come to Australia. And then they said, no one's going to Australia. And for a while, it wasn't going to happen. And then I'd heard it might be a little island off the coast of Spain, the Balearic or one, one of the islands there. And then they said Scotland. And then I thought, oh, this is coming to the UK. And when ITV announced that we had a phone call about Wales, I was just so made up. And the fact, seriously, for long, the fact that they asked me to do this show, I felt I'd already won. I thought, you know, of all the people that wanted to do it, certainly this year being the 20th anniversary, and people in my industry, of course, being out of work, um, the fact that they asked me, I thought, OK, yeah. I'm going to do it, because there'll come a time when I'll stop getting asked to do it. So it felt really special. And to turn up and uh, on the first day, it was... It's an incredible experience, and it's even yeah. hard now because I've only been back a couple of days to put into words of what it was like a, a sleepover for three weeks with 11 strangers. Well, you've come back, yeah. I mean, shrunk. How much weight have you lost? Because a lot of people are saying, oh, they're eating so much in there, it's much easier this year. But the proof is looking at you. How much weight have you lost? I lost just under a stone. But I don't think... I mean, Vernon, bless him, has lost two and a half stone, and he's oh eight foot gosh. two. But... Um, but I, I lost weight because after I did the drinking challenge, 12 hours later, I was really ill. And thankfully, they didn't show on telly because I didn't want my family getting upset. But um, I, I thought I was going to have to see a doctor. I had a few tablets and I had a dodgy stomach. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where I lost my weight. And after a while, everyone's going, Shane, you're looking, how can we catch that bug off you? So after a while, people trying to hug me to catch this bug <laughs> I had. But now I've come back and dropped two dress sizes. Which is great. <laughs> Just in time for Christmas. <laughs> and so what was, it, uh, what was yeah. it like in there? Because I think, uh, and we said this right from the word go uh, when we were watching it, that 
what we all needed, or certainly what we felt we needed, were campmates that got on well. I didn't want to turn mm. the telly on and I didn't want to see conflict because of the year that we've had. And so you guys provided us yeah. with that, that everyone had their part to play and everybody got on. And that was the great thing, Phil. As soon as we turned up, there was a... I'll tell you what it was, because after the year we've had, you know, with this whole social distancing, of course I can hug my family, but I'm a real hugger. I'm very tactile, you know, male or female, I love hugging people and, and just being close to people. And when we got in there, the first thing, because we'd all been in the, uh, isolating for two weeks before we actually went in the castle, and as soon as we saw, saw each other, we, we just all wanted to just get into, into just, yeah. just keep hugging each other. And every time we went out to do trials or challenges, we were reminded what was happening in the outside world. And ITV, I've got to give them every credit, every member of that staff from the exec producers to security. They kept the distance and it felt really strange. We was only reminded then when we went to the, the challenges or the trials, what was going on. And as soon as we got back in the four walls, you couldn't wait to just have human contact. Mm. So when we got in there, you know, contrary to belief, there was absolutely no conflict at all within them four walls. Everybody got on and everybody was excited to be there. And like I said, just to share this um, experience. And as soon as we got out, someone started the WhatsApp group and even like four o'clock this morning, we're all still wide awake going, are you still asleep, Vix? Yeah, what about you, AJ? Mo, Mo Farah's out for a run. Oh, I'll talk to him later. So, <laughs> and we're all meeting up soon. I don't want to say too much about you it, but we're you all meeting up um, soon. You mentioned AJ there, because uh, there, there was, yeah. uh, and, and these things can often come out of absolutely nowhere, come out of an edit, um, that, that, that you, when you looked at that story once you got out, it wasn't something that you recognised? No, not at all. And AJ's gone on record to say the same as well. I saw it and I went, that, but that didn't happen. You know, there was certain little... Th there were certain things we had so much fun because I'm, I'm, my wife will tell you, I'm quite lazy around the house. If I wash a cup, it's like, there you go, and just put she it on told the side. Us and that, go, oh, actually. Get that cup washed. <laughs> right, yeah. And so, um, and so AJ, you know, he's so clean, you know, and he was one of the cleanest in the castle. He always made sure things were sparkling clean. And we kind of put him on a pedestal. If anything, he'd be like, AJ, are you all right with that? Yes, mate, I'll do it. So when I saw that conflict, it kind of made no sense why it's over. It kind of didn't happen, mm -hmm. you know. And already, um, you know, I speak to AJ. He's going to be touring next year with his brother, and we spoke about. It, and I'm saying, right, AJ, can I come along and get up on stage with you? And he's coming to see me in the musical. And we're meeting each other, so we're kind of a bit. Yeah. Like, I don't know what people are talking about. Really, so listen, really. it's it's Christmas now. You can eat what <clears> you like. You can do what you like. You can leave your plates on the side. No one's going to tell you off apart from your wife. <laughs> um, how are you planning <laughs> to spend Christmas this year? Oh, well, this is, Holly, this is the first time, because normally in the past I've been doing, you know, the Christmas episodes and you're promoting them. Um, I'm normally doing Pants Out Christmas. Uh, the TV series I was supposed to do has been uh, postponed till next year. So this is the first time in years where, obviously on Christmas Day I normally get off, but not have to go and do two shows on Christmas Eve. And Boxing Day, I can't remember the last time I was on Boxing Day, and we've got all the family coming round. We're hoping we've got some family flying in from Canada, but we're not sure yet. We're just waiting to see what the situation is uh, uh, in Canada. But I'm hoping everyone gets together. And then after that, I'm straight into the West End. I've dropped two dress sizes. I'll have the heels back on again. Uh, everybody's talking about Jamie um, playing oh, Loco course. Chanel, the drag queen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're not even talking about it now. How amazing to be able to... Yeah. I, mean, God, yeah. I hope it happens for you, because, uh, because just to be able to start talking about people getting back into the theatre. I know, mate, and, you know, that was a... Well, we kind of did the deal before uh, I, I went into the castle, and all the time now I kept thinking, oh, is it going to happen? And, you know, and what theatre does, once it employs, you know, never mind the people on stage, the musicians, ushers, usherettes, and then what that means, round the theatres, bars can start opening because the footfall for sandwich bars, restaurants, cafes, mm, and, and, so and I hope by theatres opening, that can kind of... It spreads the tentacles for, certainly round the West End and up and down the country, some of the big restaurants, bars, restaurants cafes are all situated around theatres. And once theatre comes alive, you'll start seeing it, it starts spreading mm. and people Such can get back point. to work and start making a living. Well, so if I can play um, a small part in that. Yeah, well, absolutely. Everybody's talking about Jamie. It uh, starts on, in the West End on January the 5th. It's, um, thank you so much. Lovely thank to talk you. to you. Well done. Lots you, were, of love. you were great in there. We loved Bless watching you. Happy Christmas. Thanks. And listen, cheers. Mate. Merry Christmas. Love to the family, Phil and you, Holly. Thank Take you. Take care. Bye-bye.